Gameplay for Corvold in EDH. I've got an epic four-player free-for-all game that I want to share with y'all. We're going to talk through the game as it goes. This is a companion piece to the Corvold deck tech. It's on our channel right now. Make sure you go check that out. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. If this is your first time here and you want to stay up to the minute with the latest MTG Finance news or deck strategy for Standard, Brawl, Commander, and Pioneer, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel before you leave. Let's get into the gameplay. So this is our opening hand. We won the coin toss, so we're going to get to go first. And with two lands and a Wayfarer's Bauble and a Cultivate, we don't hate this hand, especially since we do get to go first. So we're going to wait on our opponents. It's going to get all the way back around to us. We're going to Wayfarer's Bauble and pass. So what we want to do with this deck is try and early on put a bunch of ramp together so that we can get Corvold going as soon as possible and or put a bunch of tokens, either treasure or food or one ones onto the battlefield so that we have sacrifice outlets for our Corvold ready to go. As you can see, our green player up here, I think about typing, wow, what a start, but I, I abstain because they went Soul Ring into Mana Crypt into Horn off of one green mana. So that is a pretty terrifying start to their entire board state. Our uh, opponent to the middle here goes Scalding Tarn and goes and gets their double land. And our opponent over here to our right plays a Swamp and passes. So now we're going to go Exotic Orchard. We can sack Wayfarer's Bauble. We're just going to hold off on it. I mean, we know what our general is and they can look if they want to. So hiding here is not much. We've got Corvold, we're playing against Sheoldred, we've got Hezezon over here, and then we've got Selvala, Mono Green Beasts, it looks like, based on Harold's Horn being named to Beast on their first turn. So we see Selvala ready to go right out of the gate, and it makes sense. They've got Green Green, <laughs> plus all the colorless mana in the world that they possibly need. Our, our opponent here up in the middle plays a Savannah, and on top of their mountain plains. So they've got a lot of mana, different colors going, and they go ahead and play a board so that they have their board on the board. Our mono black shielded opponent up here is, is waiting. We are, what are we doing? We're playing a second swamp. Are we gonna get anything else out of them? Our next turn, we're hoping to, oh, dark ritual, here we go. Oh, Thran Dynamo, now they're ramping. Everybody's ramping into a war power stone, come on. Pretty much at this point, Dockside Extortionist is going to have the most value on like turn three or four that I've ever seen because we've got artifacts just going crazy. We're going to Wayfarer's Bobble and go get a forest so that we can hopefully cultivate next turn. However, we see the Terramorphic. We go, okay, fourth land. We've got the Dockside Extortionist. This is really going to open us up into some options here. So you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create four or five, excuse me, treasure tokens, and we're going to say go. We're going to get to Terramorphic as we are, uh, as we're going. Oh, no, we go ahead and decide we, yep, we might as well. Let's just ramp. We'll play the Cultivate. We'll get a mountain and a, uh, and a swamp or a forest, yep, a forest and a mountain. Here we go. We play the for play the mountain onto the field. We got all three of our colors. We've got the forest there, and we're ready to pass over here to big green mana, which is just absolutely, absolutely rampant, crazier than anybody. Their Mana Crypt hits them that time, so that's pretty fun. And now they're playing Cage Sun. Are we just going to see the most possible ramp out of this deck? I think the answer is yes. Now, Savala's swinging at me, so I guess they are seeing us as the second threat over here, which makes sense. We've got, uh, on our turn, once we untap, we've got uh, access to five plus three, eight mana total. And that's if we don't play a land, which we know we're going to. And they know that as soon as Corvold's online, the card draw is going to start. So we see Rhythm of the Wild out of our opponent up here in the middle. Okay, so our opponent in the middle is kind of bringing up the pack. They are uh, definitely off to the slowest start out of any of us, uh, considering that eight mana 
over here with the mono black deck eight plus another one nine mana for me and i mean over here we got one two three four five six seven eight yeah they've also got access to eight mana wow so everybody kind of ramped at a at a very at a very uh quick pace but at a very even pace not counting our middle neighbor up there so at their end step we're going to sack the terramorphic let's go get a second swamp we've already got a second forest in our hand Shouldred is going to get our Dockside Extortionist. And here we've got a lot of mana, so we've got to make some choices. We want to go ahead and get Corvold online because Corvold dies. That's what Corvold does. That's why we have so much ramp in this deck. One, we have access to green, so we can. And two, Corvold becomes a target because if you just leave Corvold untouched, Corvold can win with commander damage because all of a sudden, you know, if you can get a bunch of sackable stuff, treasure tokens or altar of dementia, swing through once. 10 swing through a second time 11 you're you're done you're done we are going to draw some cards we're sacking all this stuff we play the plague crafter all of our other opponents only have one creature on the battlefield so just like that we can three for one with the plague crafter and we get to draw a card now we've got corvold he's an 8-8 we're gonna pass it here and essentially sit back that's a big turn for us we refilled our hand we've got izonian in uh, in hand so we are going to toss the pawn in the graveyard to start building that up because i believe that is our third yeah we have three creature cards in the graveyard right now so they lost some more damage to the mana crypt they've got six mana in just greens at this point plus the four colorless so they play their seven seven lieutenant and they say go. At this point, we're kind of looking for what we want to do. We need something to sacrifice on the battlefield because we're out of treasure tokens at this point. Um, we do have, we're one mana off from being able to play Brass's Bounty, which would be a good play right here. An excellent play actually, because it's going to effectively double our mana and give us a lot to sacrifice to Corvold if need be. Our middle neighbor still isn't doing anything, which is strange. The bird death must have put them off. They're on four cards in hand. Our, our mono black opponent is playing more ramp. We've got Gilded Lotus on the battlefield for them now. It'd be a great time to destroy all artifacts. Unfortunately, we don't have it in the deck or in the hand. But, and now we're ramping even harder. We've got Jet Medallion. But looking at our hand, what we're really hoping to do here is, is top deck a land because essentially... Krenko is going to be the only thing that we would want to play right now. You really want to hit like five with Iazoni, especially in Commander. Um, we see a Poison Tip Archer, but we like the Poison Tip Archers and we don't want to lose it. So we go ahead and just play Krenko because we don't want to have to sack a land when we swing with Corvold and we do want to start swinging. We've been able to untap, which is crazy. So let's, you know, let's get it going. Corvold's going to swing at Tau because Tau swung at us and they can't block flying and our middle opponent's not really doing anything. We got a flying blocker over in our uh, mono black opponent. Corvold's going to hit them for 9, which means all we've got to do is 12 damage to them next turn if we do get to untap with Corvold. And we're good. Now look at this. We still don't see a land. We're starting to get a little land starved at this point. And we're starting to get a little terrified of the of the green deck and how much mana it's got. They are, there are there were five cards in hand. Now they're playing a moss wart, so they're going to go down to three on their turn. Looking at our looking at our opportunity here, we've got putrefy open. We've got beast within open. That was that was on purpose. We wanted to keep a removal back. I don't know what this green deck is capable of. It could just like blow us out, blow us out in one turn, and that's really what we want to avoid. We get Terastodon, and they keep mana starving us. Our, our mountain gets stomped, which is a huge blow to us, because now we're sitting on five mana, and that's just not good. Luckily, they did not kill one of our open lands, and so we have the removal back just in case we do need it. Now, right here, we go ahead and make the decision to putrefy the lieutenant. Um, that, that play is not necessarily one that we needed to make, but it does save us seven life, which comes in handy later in the game. So look out for that. We pass to a uh, green opponent passes to our middle opponent here and they're still just passing through their turn. I'm not sure if they're mana starved. I'm not sure if they're just kind of hanging back to try and not look like a threat so that 
we three can just absolutely duke it out. It seems right now that us and the mono green opponent are really going at each other hard, while our, our mono black opponent is just growing and growing and growing. We got we got uh, two of their mana rocks, the Worn Power Stone and the Thran Dynamo, got aced when the Terastodon came into play. So at least we don't have to deal with those any longer, which is kind of nice. We're looking, we're tapped out. They play Geth, which kind of a bummer because they're going to be able to get creatures out of our graveyard. We untap, and yet again, oh my gosh, we don't see land. So, we go ahead and go with Angrath. Angrath is going to play double duty here. It's going to create tokens for us to sack to Korvold. It's also going to make Korvold menace, all right? So, we're not going to quite be able to take Tau out of the game here, which is such a bummer. We really wanted to be able to, and there's a far seek that we can't play that we draw instead of a land. We really wanted to be able to kill Tau out right here because they are the scariest threat to us right now, um, at least until Mono Black untaps and has Geth and is ready to go. We can't play anything else. We have to pass. Such a bummer. We're just absolutely land starved at this point in the game. We were one man off of being able to play Brass's Bounty and this entire game just blowing up for us. Didn't quite get there. So we watch Mono Green. Mono Green starts going crazy. They've got 10 power, so they get to Garrick's Horde for free. Now they're able to look at the top card of their library and they can play it. They've still got access to 10 mana here. There's six. Nope, they use three of it. They play Paleoth. Oh, they even have more than that. Yep, they. so now we're just, they are absolutely loading up the battlefield over here. We're not sure what to do. We have no responses and no plays. They're playing uh, a chameleon now. The Paleoth is triggering. Everything, everything is just absolutely exploding for this mono green deck over here. It's very interesting. It's very much the kind of deck that I would have played. I like decks like that. Big dumb creatures turning sideways. Um, I just really like the versatility and the inevitability of Corvold. Now, you're seeing what happens to a Corvold deck when it gets a little mana starved, which, you know, honestly might be the best counter to a Corvold deck because once we start absolutely comboing out with treasure tokens and, you know, 0-1 tokens, 1-1 tokens, whatever, so that we've got sackable outlets to Corvold, especially if we've got something like Altar of Dementia on the battlefield, so that we can just sack at instant speed and dig and dig and dig for whatever we need. That's when we're really rocking and rolling. So, our mono green opponent has passed to our Rhythm of the Wild threat up here in the center. Talmagi's got a green on top of their library. We'll just dump that over there so it's out of the way. We're kind of wondering what our what our opponent there is doing. We're not quite sure what their game plan is. They've got five cards in hand, four mana on the battlefield. Everybody else is years past them at this point, especially Mono Green. I'm feeling like at this point, if Mono Green can take me out, Mono Green will run away with it. If I can take Mono Green out, I will run away with it. Now, what we really need to do at this point is untap with Corvold. We've got to survive two more turns to untap with Corvold and we win. Because if we look at the mono green opponent's uh, board state over here, no reach. They play an eternal scourge with Riot. Okay, sounds great. And then they concede. So one opponent is now out and it is down to the three heavy hitters in this match. Talmagi doesn't have any reach on the battlefield right now and they are completely tapped out so we know they don't have like beast within waiting in the wings if we untap with corvold we win at least we beat the mono green opponent we're very terrified of what we got over here we got seven men on the battlefield everything they're casting costs one less to cast they've got a, a death toucher reacher so that's kind of a bummer our mono green opponent i think sees that corvold is going to take them out of the game and concedes Okay, so the Thrag Tusk is a triggered ability that's like, so guys, do I hang out or what? Do I do, do I go somewhere? Okay. Geth pulls Poison Tip Archer out of our graveyard. So this is kind of a bummer. They also pull our Wayfarer's Bauble out of our graveyard. That's fine. It's not as much of a bummer. But now they've got 
the Death Touch Reacher on the battlefield, and anytime any of our 1-1s, great, a tap land. Anytime one of our 1-1s come onto the battlefield, let me get out of the way of that tap land. It was a Rakdos Guildgate is what we drew. Anytime any of our 1-1 creatures or tokens leave the battlefield, we're going to be taking damage. We're at 20, they're at 40, but at this point we are all in on commander damage. We've got to get Corvold in their face ASAP. It's essentially two swings. They're tapped out at this point uh, with anything that could affect us. The Poison Tip Archer is going to hit us for one, but they can't block the 11 damage. So if we can untap with Corvold next turn, we're going to win as long as we can deal with the Poison Tip Archer. That's really what we got to deal with. We're not sitting on any, any removal in our hand right now, so we're going to have to dig for some removal. However, we do have three mana open. We can Beast Within if we need to. That is removal, actually. I misspoke. We do have one removal in hand. We can Beast Within the Poison Tip Archer if we want to do that. Geth targets our Plague Crafter. Okay. They've got enough mana to do this again. This is not good. They're trying to remove our Corvold. But what this signifies to us is that this is the only way they can remove our Corvold. And we have to protect it. So we're going to have to use the removal on the Geth so they can't, they're not going to be able to do the Playcrafter twice. Playcrafter would have to come in, sacrifice itself, go back to the graveyard. They reactivate Geth. So we're going to force their hand here and say, all right, you're not going to get two activations off of this. We're going to go ahead and ace the Geth. We'll deal with the Poison Tip Archer later, but we first priority is keeping Corvold alive. So at this point, they're trying to decide what else can I pull out of the graveyard? I've got four mana left. Before Geth dies, I can target something else. Pawn of Ulamog, okay? We've got more creatures entering the battlefield that they could possibly kill us with the Poison Tip Archer. All right, Playcrafter enters the battlefield. We've got to sack something, they sack something. We're gonna get pinged by Poison Tip Archer. Pew, pew. We draw a Caustic Caterpillar. Okay, Caustic Caterpillars are not exactly what we need, but it's not terrible. We can get them off of three mana and you know, maybe go into the long game. If we can't get Corvold across this turn, if we can't top deck a land, uh, some removal for the po Poison Tip Archer, then okay, maybe we can maybe we can just go into a longer game. They're gonna swing for they're gonna swing because they have to kill Angrath. Angrath would represent menace on the poison tip uh, on the Corvold, and so it would be able to get past the poison tip archer. So we got six going at Angrath. That's gonna go through. We got four going at us. We're completely tapped out. It's happening. Our turn. Here we go. We see a land. Okay. So we've got enough mana now to leave one untapped and cast Brass's Bounty which would at least give us the option to dig, which is what we need right now. We need a targeted removal of some kind. So we're gonna cast, uh, we're gonna finagle with our mana here for a second and then realize that's that's how we need to tap anyway, who cares? Um, our orchard at this point is only tapping for black, so fine, that's another swamp. But we have eight treasure tokens. Okay, so let's very carefully one by one dig. We've got Caustic Caterpillar. We draw a Marauder. That's not going to do it. we got to target this thing. They'll just sack an Eldrazi spawn or something. We sack another treasure. And we top deck Find Finality. We are perfect at this point. We're going to cast Finality. We're going to board wipe the Archer. We do some quick math and see that we can't die to the Poison Tip Archer, even though it's going to be real close. Corvold is going to survive because we're gonna put two 1-1 one, one tokens on top of that. All of these things are gonna die and it's terrifying. We've got, what, seven triggers there and we're at nine? Seven triggers of the Poison Tip Archer? Whew, thank goodness. We've got Eldrazi spawn. The Poison Tip Archer is dead now, so the Eldrazi spawn do not matter. We swing in, they're at 11 commander damage, they're going to take 17 commander damage here, and that is going to be the game. Crazy, thought the mono green was going to stomp over us, we were able to take them out. 
our middle opponent sacked and we got our mono black opponent down. As you can see, the deck when it goes off is absolutely insane. I appreciate you watching so much. Like I said, if you wouldn't mind hitting like, hitting subscribe, we would very much appreciate it. If you wanna support us further, we got a Patreon. The link is down in the description below. And don't forget that we are streaming most Tuesday and Thursday evenings over on Twitch if you wanna hang out. Appreciate it and we will catch you later.